Are you or someone you know looking to buy a used RV? If so, this buyer's inspection guide video is for you. In this episode, we'll walk through critical issues you should be able to inspect before you buy when looking at your next RV. This may help you have fewer surprises down the road. Hey everybody, this is John Marucci. You know, I made the jump to traveling with my RPOD RV in 2016 and have never looked back. I've had my share of problems along the way, and this channel attempts to be what I wish I had when I started out. I think you'll find our videos concise and packed with helpful content. If you do, we'd love to have you join the On The Road team by subscribing to the channel to follow along. You can be informed every time a new video is published by clicking the bell icon below. If you want to dive deeper, we put more content and photos on Instagram and Twitter at John Marucci. You know, there are many people buying RVs right now for the first time. This is due to the recent travel restrictions and the continued desire to get away from home. RVs provide a near ideal solution to allow us to travel and maintain social distance. If you're new to all this, it can be easy to end up with a less than great first ownership experience. We'll use my 2017 RPOD 179 as our used trailer to inspect. My RPOD is just over three years old and has been stored for the past seven months during the winter. All warranty work has been completed and the trailer has been regularly maintained. It should be a good example of a well-kept RPOD that you might find for sale. So let's take a look at the outside of the RPOD first. First thing is we want to inspect the frame and undercarriage. If you do have a crawler you can bring along, all the better to inspect the undercarriage and frame. If not, bring a towel to lie on. Also, a good headlight will allow you to see the issues better. So let's look at it together. Okay, what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the frame of the unit closely. So we're going to start at the front tongue area and make sure that the frame's in good shape. Looking for obvious issues like damage or anything, and there really isn't any issues with this. The frame looks really solid. There's no major rust or weld problems that we can see visually. So as we go along here, you're going to have a look at some of the things underneath the unit, including how the frame looks underneath and some of the other items that are underneath the unit, including the stabilizer jacks and the pipe hangers. And we're actually going to look a little bit at some of the tanks. So when we look at the tank area, we want to make sure the tanks are secure, that the tank hangers are looking good, and generally the wrap under there doesn't have any splits or cuts in it so that there won't be any moisture coming up. So we're going to do a general inspection here when we look underneath the uh, R-Pod here to make sure that it looks right. Next, we'll look at inspecting the tires. You can learn more on how to read the tire sidewall information from my Tire Basics video on the channel. And a link will be in the description below. So let's look at that now. Okay, one really important thing to look at on any used trailer are the tires. So you want to inspect the tires closely. Now, for this specific trailer, we have brand new Goodyear Endurance tires put on that were just recently put on. That's not always going to be the case. So when you're inspecting a used trailer, you want to look closely at the tires, including look at the date stamp on the tires. That's when they were manufactured. Very important. You also want to look at the tread of the tires to make sure that you don't have any issues with uneven tread wear. That can be signs of trouble with the axle or the bearings. So look for the tires in terms of whether they have positive or negative camber, whether they're leaning out at the top or in at the top, so that the camber should be straight on good tires. Now, in some ways, it's better to look at a trailer with older tires so you can actually see some of that evidence of what's going on. With these new tires, it's going to be a little more difficult to do. The outside fiberglass and seams are likely the most important items to inspect. If something is amiss here, you'll likely have water leaking to the cabin somewhere. Take your time looking at this. So let's look at it together. Okay, the next thing we want to do is look at the quality of the fiberglass and the seams and the caulk along the seams. So you want to look for any abnormalities in the finish of the fiberglass and you want to check all the seams. Now the R-Pod has a lot of seams and a lot of caulk going on. So on all the edges around metal to fiberglass, you're going to have caulk and you want to check it all. So take a few minutes and inspect all the seams, especially around windows and doors and things like that. So as we look here, you'll see that there's caulk along the bottom rail. There's caulk that wherever there's metal and fiberglass, there's gonna be caulk. There's gonna be caulk along the door. So just take your time and inspect all the fiberglass looking for any abnormalities and any problems with the seams or caulk. Inspecting the roof is extremely important. 
as it's going to take the brunt of the weather. You should ensure that the seller has a way for you to inspect the roof. An 8 to 10 foot ladder is optimal. If not available, see if the seller has any pictures of the roof, or if possible, bring your own ladder or even a drone. So let's look at this together. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually look at the roof. Both the fiberglass and the seams, there's a lot of caulk up here around each of these cutouts. So it's important to look at this carefully. The roof is going to get all the water, remember, so we want to make sure these seams are solid. So first of all, around this antenna, you can see that it's got a good bit of, of uh, die-core around here that's sitting pretty good. Also, the seams along the edge are really important that they're not cracked. you got to look closely at these as you go along. Inspect these closely to make sure you don't have any cracks so there won't be any water seepage. Back here, along the uh, spoiler as well, you want to look at closely. Along all these cutouts, whether it be the fan, or any of these vents, you want to make sure you check it really closely. So it's important if you can bring a ladder or have access to the roof to check this out closely. The storage area is an early indicator of issues. It can tell you a lot about the trailer's condition. Make sure the seller has it free of gear and debris before you arrive so you can see inside easily. Okay, whenever inspecting a used trailer, it's always a good idea to inspect the storage area because you can identify issues of leakage, or any other issues inside the storage area that might be a problem. So make sure you have the storage area opened up to be able to look at it closely. It'll give you an indication of any kind of issues going on with the trailer, including the floor or any of the walls in there. So look for any discoloration or any issues very closely in the storage area. Inspecting the external electrical is not optional. Make sure everything electrical outside the trailer works properly. Make sure your seller has a good battery hooked up to the trailer before you arrive. It should also be clear if the battery is part of the potential sale. Okay, so you're going to also want to look at the external stuff in terms of electrical on the tongue jack. You have a power tongue jack right here, and you also have a utility light here on the trailer. We're going to check both of them. These are going to be uh, DC powered by the battery. So basically, you're going to want to test this out by just checking it, and you'll notice it works pretty well. So you can push this up or down. There's also a light on this that comes on on both sides, so that's check, checked out just fine. And there's also a little light here for utility. If you have to come, happen to come into a campsite at night, you can use that. So those are good. The only other outside electrical we want to look at is the porch light. So the porch light is just something that you're going to leave on at night at times. And, uh, you know, on this unit, it's something that you turn on from the inside, but also works on the, uh, the DC power. Don't forget to test the seven pin connector. You want to back up your tow vehicle and plug the 7-pin connector in. Remember to turn your lights on and check the blinkers and brake lights. You'll probably need someone else to look at this while you test it. Okay, another thing to do is to plug in the 7-pin connector into your tow vehicle and check the marker lights, the driving lights, the blinkers, and the brake lights. Okay, it's very important to do this to make sure both the 7-pin connector is working and all the lights are working properly. I actually haven't had an issue with this in the 171, the first trailer I owned. That was a problem to get fixed. So make sure you try to plug in the 7-pin connector and check the lights as you go along. Now that we've looked at the outside of the trailer, let's look inside. There's a lot to test inside the trailer, starting with the DC and AC sides of the electrical system. The trailer has a converter that works to charge the battery when plugged into shore power. You'll want to ensure this is working. Once again, make sure the seller has a good battery connected to the trailer before you arrive. Okay, the next thing we're going to test is the DC power to the trailer. So these are all things that work just off the battery. So what we've done is we've disconnected shore power and then we're going to walk through the trailer and make sure everything that's supposed to work from battery only will work from battery only. So let's start off with the refrigerator. So the Dometic refrigerator can work on battery and the panel light should come on when you turn on the power. You can see that they came on. Now right now it's set to battery so it'll run on battery. But the first thing is these, this light panel should work on battery only. Okay, the next thing you wanna check, if you have a newer unit, you're gonna have USB outlets. So I brought a little USB fan here. We're just gonna plug it in. Okay, and check the fan to make sure that USBs work properly, right? Just going to check both of them here. And it works just fine. So that fan's working off USBs directly from 12-volt battery. All right, so that's the next thing we wanted to check. Okay, over here on the control panel, 
This should all work properly off battery as well. So if you click any of these buttons to show the lights, the LED lights, you should see here that's the battery level, fresh tank, black tank, gray tank. So that's those lights are coming on because they should run off the battery as they should. We're going to turn the water pump on next. Now the water pump should also work off battery. Now it's on right now and the light is on, which is good. We're just going to turn a little bit of water in the sink here. And you can hear the water pump come on, so that's good too. That's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to be able to work on battery. Okay, the next thing is the thermostat. You notice the light did come on on the thermostat. Now one thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, go to furnace here and turn the furnace way up and it's connected to propane. So what this will do is the fan will kick on and the fan will run on battery. So let's just kick this up a good bit and uh, try to kick the furnace on for just a moment here to get this to work so you can hear the fan coming on. So give it just a second. Okay, and so you can hear the fan coming on for the uh, for the furnace. So that's a good sign that all those things that are working properly on a uh, 12 volt battery are working. Okay, the next area we're gonna jump into is the bathroom. So let's go ahead and open the door here. Now in the bathroom, obviously both the light and all the overhead lights should work, right? And the fan should work. Now you notice the fan's on, you turn it off and turn it back on and turn it to different speeds and that's going to work on battery as well. So that's all good. So, so far everything's working really well on battery only, not plugged into shore power. So let me go ahead and turn this off so I don't forget it. All right? And then just the other thing that I didn't mention is all these overhead lights, right? Should go off and on. All of the overhead LED lights should work perfectly on battery without being plugged into shore power. The final thing I want to look at is the stereo. So if we look at the stereo here, you're going to notice that we do have light on the stereo, which is good. Again, it runs on battery power, right? So it is working. It is lit up. And I think that's about it. Those are the main elements that are supposed to work on battery. Okay? So there we go. That's the check of the DC circuitry. Okay, so the next thing we're going to check is the AC side of the electrical system. Now, you may be able to hear in the background the converter running. So that's a good sign. That means the battery is being charged now that we're plugged into shore power. So the first thing we're going to check is the AC outlet. I have this little USB converter that I'm going to plug in. And you'll notice the light goes on. So that means we're getting power through this outlet. Now you're going to want to check each one of the outlets with something like this. Okay, let's move on to the refrigerator. Right now it's set to battery power. We're just going to switch it to shore power. Just tap on it and you'll notice that it goes to shore power. The shore power icon's lit up, so that's good. That means it's running off shore power. And the microwave also we're going to test. Now, we're not plugged into full 30 amp. I'm plugged in via a dog bone into a household outlet. So I don't have full 30 amp, so I'm not going to test the convection part of this unit. I'm just going to test the microwave. So I've got a little water and a Pyrex uh, measuring cup here. And I'm just going to uh, add 30 seconds and let the microwave run. I'll let this run for about half the time just to make sure the water's heating up and that the microwave's working. Now I can see it's rotating and it seems to be running, which is a good sign, and you're going to need to test this for sure to make sure the appliance is working properly. So let me stop it. Okay. And we definitely have some heat in the water. So that's a good sign. That means that appliance, at least the microwave side, is working fine. Okay, with that, let's go over to the control panel, because there's several things here from an AC perspective we want to double check. The first one is, when you look at the control panel, you tap on the battery uh, button here, the battery should now show full, all four LED lights, and that's because it's being charged by the converter, so that's a good sign. The rest of the things should work as well. They actually work on DC power like we talked about, but this should definitely show a full set of lights because the converter is working. Now, the thermostat's interesting because now what you can do is you can actually run the overhead fan. So I just turn it to low, and in just a moment, the overhead fan's gonna go off, and you can hear it right now coming on. And that shows that it's working. Now, once again, let me turn that off to get the noise out of the out of the situation. Okay, now once again, we're not uh, connected to 30 amps, so I can't test the air conditioner. And that may be something you run into if you're going to look at a used unit. You may or may not be able to test the air conditioner. Okay, we also have the slide. 
Now the slide can run on DC and we didn't look at it on DC because I'd only use that on an emergency. I don't want to drain the battery that much by pulling in the slide or pushing out the slide on battery, but it will definitely work on AC. So I'm just going to tap it for a second. I'm not going to pull it in. I'm just going to tap it to make sure I can hear the motor go. And you heard it, right? Pretty simple. Okay, so the motor's running, working fine on AC. And then finally, we're going to go over to the television. Now the television, in the newer units, the television actually has a DC plug, but this is a 2017 unit we're looking at, and this does not have a DC plug. It's based on AC. So I'm just going to hit the power on, and you should see the television uh, start screen come up. And it's coming up right now. So you know the television's working. So there's some of the main things on AC that you're going to want to check when you look at a used unit. So let's move on. To test the propane system, the seller will need to have propane hooked up to the trailer. Make sure this is communicated before you arrive to inspect the unit. Okay, so the next system we're going to check is the propane system. And the first thing we're going to look at is the stove. So this is based on propane. I'm just going to uh, light the stove. And you may want to bring one of these lighters with you. I'm just going to light the stove and it should light up pretty quickly. Now just be patient. If this hasn't been opened up in a while and the previous owner is, is, has to put propane in, it may take a little while for propane to come up through the lines. But let's make sure we test both sides. And yep, both sides lit, so that's good. So the stove is good to go. We're going to go over here to the refrigerator next. So right now the refrigerator is set to work on shore power. We're just going to change that to propane. Just double tap it. And if we just wait a moment here and listen, you can hear a clicking. So I just heard a click and I actually heard it fire up. Uh, sometimes if it doesn't fire up right away because there's air in the lines, it may take a few tries to fire up. It'll try three times and if it doesn't light, there'll be a warning light that comes on. You're going to need to try it again to get the, the air through the lines. Again, I heard it click. So apparently it didn't light the first time. Click. And that clicking is attempting to light the, uh, the propane there. Okay, let's just let it, let it go for a minute. Okay, and that sounds like it may have caught there, so let's go ahead and move on. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is the water heater. Now, on your utility board here, you have the water pump and the water heater. Now, the water heater here controls the propane element in the hot water tank, not the electrical element. The electrical element of the hot water tank heater is actually outside to turn it off and on. But we're going to turn this on, and you'll notice this little DSI fault light comes on. And again, it's going to try and light. So we may be able to hear it if you listen carefully, it clicking a little bit and trying to light the hot water, the propane under the hot water tank. And the light went off and you could actually hear it click on. So that's a good sign. That means that your propane is actually lighting. And I'm listening carefully and I can actually hear it fire up. So that's a great sign. Okay, so you got hot water, the propane working on the hot water tank. That's great. Now, the next thing we want to test is the furnace. Now we're going to go to the thermostat here. And we're going to actually go to the furnace, right, and crank the heat up so that the furnace comes on. So what we're going to hear is the furnace kick on us in a second. The fan will come on, which you can hear right now, right? Now let me go ahead and turn the low fan off so we can put it on auto. We'll do that again. Okay, so what you're hearing right now is the actual furnace fan kicking on. And I'm listening for the actual uh, propane to light here in just a second. It may just take a moment. And one thing you can do after a minute or two is actually just put your hand in front of the heater and test to see that it's working. So those are the four main elements of the propane system that you want to check when you're checking out any used trailer. The next thing we'll look at is plumbing. Two quick tips. Ensure the seller has water in the fresh water tank before you arrive. Also, Ask if the seller has a water pressure regulator so you can test the city water connection. Okay, so the next system we're going to look at and test is the plumbing system. So we've got the water pump on and we're going to test the various outlets. So let's turn on the water from the hot water. Right, so it's coming out pretty good there and cold. 
and you can hear the water pump coming on obviously okay working just fine let's go into the bathroom now all right and we're going to test the faucet here too so let's just turn on the hot coming out good pressure and the cold good pressure let's just test the uh the shower for a second we'll just turn it on and it's coming out of the shower okay so really good all right okay that's good on that and then let's test the toilet so let me lift this up and the toilet has a little handle on the side here so we're just going to make sure water comes through no problem okay so that's all good we got good water pressure in all the main systems the only thing you're going to want to check is the outside shower as well as far as water pressure okay and then obviously you're going to need to do the same thing if you can when you're purchasing or looking at purchasing a used unit test it with city water so this is all on fresh water tank and the water pump through the battery but you're going to want to test it on city water if you can just hook up the city water to the right connection and test it again to make sure everything's going on okay so that's that section looking at the plumbing you know, not everyone is detail oriented, so you may want to bring someone experienced with you or someone who can see detail if you can't. This is especially important when inspecting the interior walls and ceiling. Okay, so the next thing we want to look closely at, and this is with any used trailer, is look carefully at the walls and the ceilings for any issues at all. So you want to look for things like discoloration or any issues that catch the eye or any soft spots. So one of the things you want to be careful of with the ceilings is to not freak out about coloration that have to do with like staple marks because they can discolor over time. It's not a big deal. And there may be a few marks of discoloration that aren't a problem. So just be aware of that. But if you see something that's a patch or something that's discolored, you may, uh, may be concerned about something like that. So you need to look closely at the ceilings and also look closely at the walls. So on the slide out, for example, right, slide out sit outside the unit and there's windows and such, you want to look around the windows carefully for any signs of past leakage. And those are obviously concerns if you see something like that. So that's one of the main things with ceilings and walls. Number one, don't worry about it if there's little staple marks that are discolored, but if you see patches or things like that, you want to be a little concerned, both in the ceilings and the walls. Our pod and many ultralight trailers floors are made of styrofoam sandwich by Thin Luan Board. They're not made for water penetration. Many floors have limited support, as is the case in the kitchen area on the R-Pod 179. So the next thing you want to look at is the condition of the floors of the trailer. So this is pretty important. If you've had any past leaks in the trailer, it's probably going to show up in the floor somewhere. So a couple things you want to do. First of all, you may want to bring a flashlight with you so that you can check out areas, pull out drawers, etc and look under there to see if you have any evidence of past leaks. Especially look near the cabin door, as water may have leaked in through the cabin door. And one other thing, place to look if you can do it is under the wet bath. There's usually a little vent you can unscrew and have a look under there. And just use your flashlight to get under there to see if you have any leaks. But generally you want to look for leaks. The other issue is softness of floors. Now some of the models that you may get into of a trailer may have softer floors. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a leak but it just may mean that it's been worn over over time. So just be aware of that, that you can have some bounce on floors. That doesn't necessarily mean it's catastrophic, but it may need some attention at some point. I hope this video has helped to give you a solid guide to inspect any trailer you may be considering. The old saying, let the buyer beware, is certainly true when purchasing a used trailer. It's important to take your time when looking at something expensive that you'll have to live with. If anything alarms you when inspecting a used trailer, simply thank the seller and walk away. If you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and share it with anyone you know who's looking to buy a used RV. Also, if you have other tips for those looking to buy a used RV, feel free to put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. This is John Marucci, and so long for now.